How many of you have ever had formal training in SQL? One, two, three, three and a half, maybe four or five. Um, the old joke used to be there's been one bash script written and everyone else has just kind of modified it. Most programmers in the PHP world are sort of in the same boat. They've stolen some SQL code that worked from here and they made changes here and it sort of works but they're not really happy with it. So for the past couple of years I've been giving talks on how to make things faster. And I just realized a couple months ago that I've been to showing you the tools but I haven't really been explaining how to apply the tools. And the best tool you'll have is between your ears. Uh, by the way, we're doing very well at Oracle. MySQL is a profit-making center for Oracle. We're hiring, we're adding engineers, we're adding support engineers, we're adding development engineers, we're adding folks who write documentation. Uh, we're making money. We're the number five instructor-led class and the number eight video class in Oracle, which is, considering there's thousands of those, uh, kind of amazing. Structured query language. Uh, the five or six of you who've had the, the training in it know the history. Uh, structured query language was developed as a way to help people define the data and pull it back. Uh, those of you with gray hair realize there's a pendulum every 10, 15 years. There's a new way of reclassifying things. Structured query language, objects, this all kind of the same pendulum. Uh, originally based on relational algebra. Uh, for those of you who have math panic, don't worry. Uh, I will mention the calculus word in a minute, the, the C word. Uh, relational calculus is how you play with groups and sets. Um, once again, I apologize for not getting this into the non-preview mode. Uh, if you download the slides from the website or from slideshare.net slash Dave Stokes, you'll get a nice visual representation of this. Um, hopefully you're used to Venn diagrams. We try to get everything that's in A that also matches B, or everything that's in B but and in A that matches, or where you want everything a Cartesian join. You're playing with sets of data. Uh, procedural programmers tend to deal with one line of data at a time, so they don't quite get the grasp of that. So what happens is they think, aha, one line of data, one record, they don't think in sets of data. And I'm trying to help you start thinking in sets of data. So your program sends SQL to the server. What does it do? Well, the daemon grabs that code. It parses it to make sure that there's no syntactical errors. Then it figures out, well, how am I going to solve this problem? And then it goes out and gets your data. That's a lot of overhead. We have a no SQL API that uses your same data in the same storage engine, uh, NODB or cluster storage engine. Um, if you use that as a key value pair, it's usually about 80 times faster. So all that parsing and examining to make sure everything's good and then going out and planning how to get your data is very expensive. Well, why is that a problem with MySQL? Uh, you'll see that in a little bit. I'm a slide ahead of myself. So what we want to do is you want to get the data you need. So the first thing you do is select only the fields you want. Uh, a lot of folks do select asterisk, which is shorthand for give me everything. Uh, very wasteful on bandwidth and disk I.O. Uh, you, if you can get away from that, you get rid of excess I.O. on disk and memory. And you want to make your data as compact as useful. Uh, if you like something like WordPress, Anything that's an integer is going to be a big int. That's like 18 trillion values. <laughs> um, so zip codes, 18 trillion values. Um, age, zero to 18 trillion. Um, the government's not that inefficient. Uh, they probably used unsigned, so it probably would be even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the trouble is when you're, you're moving, if you've ever had to shovel everything, the more you have to shovel, the more work it is. So try to make your shovel loads smaller. By the way, I give horrible analogies. So MySQL uses what they call a cost-based optimizer. We want to minimize the amount of I.O. necessary to go out and grab your data. MySQL 5.6 is going to change that. In MySQL 5.6, we realized that, gee, a lot of I.O. was like Fusion I.O. cards and stuff like that. 
what is the IO time? It's practically nil. So what we're going to go in 5.7 and use is the elapsed time. So a little bit of what I'm telling you is going to change the concept won't, but the, uh, the cost will. So MySQL is trying to get you your data as cheaply as possible. If you're used to Oracle, Oracle, you can lock down a query plan. Query plan is how the database is going to go out and sweep up all the data you requested and give it back to you. Oracle DBAs can lock this down, lock away, and never have to worry about it. MySQL wants to optimize it every time you send that query. We're just that helpful. We want to go back and do that for you. Now, over time, it builds up a set of statistics of where the data is. It's going to estimate where things are. Well, estimate, I want precise. I want to know exactly where it is. On a busy set of data, we're storing things in B trees. And things are loading up heavy over here. Things have been deleted over here. So we get by with using estimates rather than precise controlled for speed's sake. The main tool is a command called explain. You put explain in front of your queries. Now before 5.6, if you had a delete command that you were trying to get rid of some data and optimize that, you changed the delete to a select and put explain in front of it, went through, the, through it. Uh, we changed the case switch in there. Uh, just put explain in front of any data uh, manipulation command that you're going to use and it will give you some output. Uh, once again, <laughs> please download this. I wish I could get this on bigger. We have a very simple table. This is from the World Database. If you've done any MySQL training or in any of our books or gone to any of our websites, uh, we have a three-table database that's old uh, history on or facts about various countries, their languages, their populations, size of that. And one of the tables there is for cities. And it has five columns, an ID column, I think so, security number, uh, a name, name of the city, a country code, a three-digit code for which country, we're using the three-digit ISO standard, uh, a district, which is uh, where it is in uh, like Asia or US or Africa, and then a population. Very simple table, you probably all have tables like this. Uh, you notice the numeric stuff are integers, the things for characters are chars, if you're new to MySQL, we have a variable char where it doesn't solve everything. Like here we have chars, 35 characters. That means every time it writes it to disk, that's 35 characters it's writing for that one column. With var chars, you can actually get exactly the number of characters you had up to 35 with an extra digit in there to see how long it is. Um, so if you're reading SQL for the first time, don't get frightened by that. So we have an example query. We're saying select everything from the city table, and I'm telling it only get three records. So it comes through, first three ID records, one, two, three, the names are Kabul, Kandahar, or in Herat, they're in Afghanistan, and the various districts they're in, which I guess is actually their, the state and their populations. Very simple query, very straightforward. Uh, by the way, you notice the ID numbers are in sequence. Uh, they're not guaranteed to be in sequence. They just happen to be lucky in this table. So I, run a, I put explain in front of that query. Um, I type in explain, select star from city, limit three. It's the uh, same as this, just has explain in there. And it comes through and gives me some information. Now, this is a line typed in with a semicolon or a backslash lower G. If you do it with an uppercase G, it puts it in a vertical format, which makes it a little bit easier to read. So, it's telling us on the output, first line is ID number. It's telling, okay, this is the first query that we're looking at from what you sent us. And it's telling us, well, we're hitting the t city table, city, city. Um, it's 
looking for possible keys to use, but we're not using any keyed fields. We're not searching on a keyed field, so it doesn't use any. And it's going to go out and read 3,839 records. It has to read the entire table. But we only asked for three records. So you're basically doing 3,839 reads to get three. Have I lost anyone so far? So you're reading this to get that. Indexes. Indexes let you go directly to the record you want in the table. Uh, I used to use an example of you go to a library and someone hands you a dictionary, all the words are in non-alphabetical order and you're looking for the plural of the word moose. And you know whoever wrote this dictionary also put in different definitions for the same word. So if you're trying to look for the plural of the word moose, you've got to read from the first page to the last page and then gather that information. By the way, anyone here know the plural of the word moose? <laughs> huh? No, moose. It's a weird word in English that has plural and singular are the same. So with indexes, you go right to the record you want instead of reading in all of them to find the ones you want. Uh, they're great, but they require maintenance and overhead. We'll talk about it a little bit later. It's not a panacea. Like in the query we have here, we're saying we want to read everything. We're not spe specifically specifying any ID number or anything that uniquely identifies the rows we want. Now for those of you who are in the, reading the manual, before trying to figure out how things work, there's a gazillion types of queries that we handle. We do simple queries, primaries, unions, dependent unions, subqueries. MySQL before 5.6, we didn't do subqueries very well. Our optimizer now handles that. So if you have an older installation of MySQL and you're using some sort of things like, um, um, can't remember the name of the product, an object <laughs> broker for you, and it was designed for Oracle that does subqueries very well, and you port the same stuff over to MySQL. We now handle subqueries, so that's less of a problem. So, let's take a query. We're going to say, once again, select from city where country code equals USA. So we just want to know the, the cities that are in the United States. So, we now have a simple query, and we're working off a type of reference. There's like 28 different types of types out there. Reference is, we're looking for something that references country code, and we passed it a constant. And this time, instead of reading 3,839, we only have to read 274 records. Much better. Now, if we had the same table without an index on the country code, uh, God forgive me, I added some records to this for, some, for another presentation. But once again, we have to go back and read all the records to get just the ones we want. So, when you go home and you start looking at your tables that aren't running the way, your queries that don't work the way you want, and you want to know, gee, do these things have indexes on them? Uh, easiest thing to do is type show create um, table and then pass it the table name. And it will show you how, when it restores things from a backup or the internal thing, rather your standard uh, DDL, what the various keys are. And here we have a primary key on ID. We have another key on country code, and we also have a foreign key on country code that goes into the country table. That's a little deeper than this. Hit me a lunch if you want to know how foreign keys work. The other trick to finding indexes, once again, <laughs> apologize for the size of this, show index from table name. And here again, you see the two indexes. Okay, a more common example. 
here we're doing select um, let's do this right city dot name as and call it city country dot name call it country the population from the city table <coughs> and join what's ever in the city table onto the country table matching up the country code uh, key that we saw earlier. Now MySQL sees this as two separate queries. The first one it's going to do is it's going to go out to country. There's 239 uh, countries out there. It could possibly use the primary key on the country code, but the optimizer rejects that and doesn't use any keys. God, I wish I had this better. Um, you can click that exchange button if you take your mouse and drag it over there and click exchange. It should stop. Is the mouse showing up on there? Yeah, yeah, there it is. Go down. Okay, I'm working somewhat blind. Is there anyone here? You're going sideways, you need to go down. Down. Back over this way. To the left or right? To the left. My left. <laughs> or, or right there, there like, warmer, warmer. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that. Can you start over? <laughs> okay, I'll start over. Simple query. Select star from city. Get all this information out here. Turn it outside. Simple query on Table City it reads all the rows. So here we go. We're looking just at the country code. Country code is an index that we're using. Uh, it's a constant we're searching for. Quote USA unquote. Uh, it's a reference on that constant. Only 274 uh, records read. So it goes past that, show create, show index. Okay. We're going to go out and we're going to match every city to its country and also get its population. We're going to join those on the fields country code and code. That's the foreign index, foreign key reference that I wasn't going to go into. So for table B, which is country, it's going to have to read every record. For city, using country code, it's going to estimate, estimate that for every city, it's going to have to read, do at least eight reads into the database. Once again, that's an estimate, not a true number. So we end up with roughly 2,000 records we have to read to do this request. So. Another query, I want, want to have you folks look at a couple of queries to get used to p seeing what the output looks from. Slightly, com more, slightly more complex query. We go through and say, okay, we want to do that query, but we only want the population with over 3 million people, the life expectancy is over 66. Oh, by the way, um, served by the city name and the population, and I only want to see 20 of those. So all we want is 20 records, right? Guess what? MySQL is going to go out and give you the 239 times 8 reads, which is roughly 2,000 reads for 20 records. Does that seem unfair to anybody here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. What happens is MySQL is going to go out and doing those big, remember those red dot things at the beginning that you didn't see because MySQL has to go out and say, OK, I want all the cities. I want the matching stuff from the country. And I have to give that to you. And for you to get just the 20, I have to go out and get all this for you. Oh, by the way, if, yes, sir? Is it in that case where you have, you've got two tables, and you've got the rows estimated in one and the rows estimated in the other, is it always going to be that it takes the row 
roads in one multiplied by the roads in the other? Is how much it has to be? Yeah, that's the estimate of it. Okay, so it's one times the other. So yeah. It's just 239 here, 8 here, yeah. 39 times 8. Yeah. And the great thing is the optimizer might do it on Monday in that order with the 239 and the 8. On Wednesday, it might be 8 and 239. <laughs> Yeah. That's why when you're in WordPress, you do everything with big ints, it tends to add up over time. Um, believe it or not, that concept is the hardest thing for a lot of developers to get hold of. MySQL is going to give you a big dump of data and it will win you it down on the where after it goes out and does all that 8 times 239. And if you look here on the extra line, it says, well, we have to do a file sort. You wanted it ordered by name and population. It also says using temporary, which means it's going out and doing disk I.O. into a temporary table. Much, much slower. There's ways to get past that. Now, that same query, using something called Visual Explain, is here. Now, I don't know about you, I'm used to reading that. I've been doing it for 10 years. It's messy. If you're just starting out, Visual Explain is wonderful. Okay, how do I get Visual Explain? Visual Explain works with Workbench 6 and MySQL 5.6. With MySQL 5.6, the output of the Explain command is in JSON. From that, we build these nice little pictures. So once again, we have the country. By the way, in red is bad. We have to read everything in the country 239 times. It's joined on the country code key. And we have to do eight reads estimated to get down there. Now, how many of you would prefer to read this versus the command line output? Any, anyone not in favor of this? Mm -hmm. By the way, MySQL 5.7 and Workbench 6.1, it will show you the costs of associated with the choices here. Now, if you're a serious DBA, we do have optimizer tracing and explain extended some other stuff that will help you tweak the last 10, 15% out of a query. I don't think anyone's in here, in here is ready for that. Okay, let's go a little deeper. How many of you have queries that look more like this when you open up the editor? Okay. Um, we're doing some stuff where we're putting names together. Um, we're grabbing all the stuff. This is from another test database we have called Sequila, which is basically a video rental database. Uh, those of you with gray hair might remember videotapes being rented. Um, this is fairly nasty because we have, what, four inner joins. And we're looking for rental return date is null. Uh, by the way, when you're setting up your indexes, avoid null if you can. Null is a non-value. It's something that says there's no value. Databases work really good with, with binary values. There's something there, something's not there. If you have a null value, you have to, okay, it's not there, it's there, or there's no value. It complicates the logic and slows things down. Okay, for those of you with good necks, that's the old version format. Visual Explain. So we're trying to find all the films that don't have a return date. Uh, so we have to read everything there. So we only have to get all that, do 1,000 times 2 times 1 times 1 times 1. Once again, that's an estimated number. Okay, big hint, compound indexes. By the way, don't index every column and every table. Uh, it slows things down, sucks up memory. Now these guys are laughing because you've probably done it like I have before. If we create a table, create table, address, address one, city, state, and zip, and we create an index, which I'm creatively calling city, state, zip, on the city, state, and zip fields, 
When you need to do a search, you can use that index for searching city, state, and zip, or city, state, or just city. One index works for th three different types of queries. And by the way, if you're doing a search on city and state, MySQL will also give you all the records and drag along zip. So for no extra overhead, it will give you all the zip codes for that city and state. Okay, if you're serious about making your queries really, really scream, and you don't have a DBA, and you don't really want to become a full-time DBA, skim chapter eight of the MySQL manual. Uh, if you're doing joins, join on like types. If you have to cast, so like from a character to an integer, it's gonna slow things down. Um, keep columns as small as practical. We have a thing called procedure analyze. You put in the end of a, of a query for some column names and some depth. It will tell you how big your fields are on average and what they recommend it to look like. Uh, you also have to occasionally, when things are quiet, repeat, quiet, on your InnoDB tables, and especially your MySAM tables, use Analyze Table. This will go through and reconfigure the statistics to make sure everything's balanced out properly. Uh, if you don't do this and you're doing a lot of adds, drops, and deletes, your queries will suffer because something in the query pan doesn't quite work out. It's going to go out and fetch data it didn't expect to. And by the way, keep looking for improvements. As your data sets grow, the assumptions that you had earlier will prove to be false. Yes, sir? Um, since you were talking about indexes, I, it seems like I read a while back that MySQL will only use one index um, per query. Is that, is that true? Or? Uh, my SM, it's true. MySQL will use only one index per table. With, table. with NODB, it will use the primary and the secondary. Okay. So, so if I'm joining with multiple tables, um, then it can use one per table? Yeah, that's the ideal way of doing it. You can do it the other way, but things will slow down, you'll find. And it, it's just the optimizer that determines which index to use? Or, um, the, you can, the optimizer will guess which indexes to use. But if you're running explain on it and you say, gee, that's, that's stupid, I have a city index, why are you using that? Instead of some, you know, using zip code instead of city, you can actually force it with the force word in your query to use that index. Really? Yes. Yeah. Like I said, it makes its best guess, and sometimes it guesses wrong. Now, the big concept I want to get to you folks, if you're looking for three records and you're reading 3,000 or you're looking for uh, five records and you're having to read 20,000, I want to get to the idea that MySQL does a lot of work to, to give you back uh, stuff when you do limits or sort buys and stuff like that. does a lot of extra work you don't see. If you really want to get into this, two books I highly recommend. Effective MySQL Optimizing SQL Statements. Uh, it's a 110-page book, no fluff, very concise guide on how to optimize queries. Um, another book, uh, version three, or edition three, of High Performance S MySQL. Um, this book has a lot of extra information in there and on server turning and all that. If you're a developer, it's, it's nice to have around if you're curious about it, but it's not essential. The one on the left is just about optimizing stuff. Um, I want to invite you all to MySQL Connect, which will be the end of this year in San Francisco. We're at the same time as Oracle Open World. This is going to be a great chance to see engineers from MySQL. Also, folks from Percona, uh, Verizon, PayPal, Facebook, Twitter, and a lot of the top folks in the community will be there giving presentations. It's a four-day event during the week. Um, very, very interesting what's to uh, hear what a lot of the top people are doing. And plus, you get face-to-face -face access to everybody there. Uh, once again, I'm sorry for the display. Thanks for giving the mouse guidance there. Uh, if you ever need to read me, reach me, I'm david.stokes at oracle.com. My Twitter handle is at Stoker. I gotta warn you with the Academy Awards coming out, Nicole Kidman was in a movie called Stoker. 
So if you start following me and you see stuff about red hair, nudity, uh, things in Hollywood, unfortunately it's not me. Um, unfortunately. Um, if you want the slides, they're slideshare.net slash Dave Stokes. I've updated them to, uploaded them to the conference website. 